Right, as I said, I would discuss growth hormone and IGF-1 use. Now, in the meantime of me originally saying that, and my belief that super pharmaceutical doses don't really have a great net impact on sustainable muscle growth. A study has been released by the British Journal of Sports Medicine. Um, it is in volume 37, issue 2, if you want to look it up. Uh, and the name of the study or the review is Claims for Anabolic Effects of Growth Hormone, a Case of the Emperor's New Clothes. Um, it confirms that growth hormone has an impact on fat loss through the um, metabolic use of adipose tissue, basically the metabolism of fat, uh, and that it has powerful effects on carbohydrate metabolism as well, and that it increases IGF-1. It doesn't deny any of those. Now it says, it goes on to say that when this product, a lot of the claims you see for products that are selling growth hormone type releases and such like, they're just not substantiated and the studies behind them are weak at best. Um, it even questions when a recent UK Royal Society of Chemistry sponsored conference on drugs in sport labeled GH as the most anabolic substance known. Uh, and it says that in fact there is very little evidence of anabolic activity in healthy adults. In fact, it goes on to say that there is evidence that chronic levels of HGA actually decrease performance uh, and may cause metabolic changes that would likely diminish the capacity for strenuous physical activity. Uh, it goes on to talk about cardiac instability, hypertension, insulin resistance, and possibly type 2 diabetes through growth hormone use. Uh, now, uh, it also talks about... Hang on. Oh, sorry. Uh, but it, what it does go on and talk about, there are a lot of studies in people with growth disorders, uh, and it's a very effective treatment for people suffering with dwarfism or stunted growth or issues with bone or muscle development in their growth period, so before uh, maturity. And it also goes on to talk about that elderly with diminished growth hormone levels, it has shown to increase lean muscle mass, but that it didn't show any actual cross-sectional growth of muscle fiber, muscle tissue. Uh, it just changed the ratio of uh, muscle tissue to fat tissue due to the fact that there was a high level of fat metabolism. Um, now, it carries on about how it's been used and very successful in people with HIV and AIDS, uh, but that there is a lack of evidence that uh, it is particularly effective at maintaining muscle mass. But it does talk about gains in connective tissue, and it uh, argues that some of the muscle mass readings will be confused because connective tissue is regarded as muscle mass in those tests and it has definitely shown to increase connective tissue levels and would be very useful as a protective measure against injury and an increase in recovery but it goes on to say that there is no direct action as far as they can see of growth hormone with muscle tissue itself and it has no impact on protein synthesis. Um, it does go on to say that it does increase IGF-1. Um, uh, and it says this seems to be a very short-term stimulus when it first started. Um, but there's no credible evidence to show any medium to long-term effects or benefits from using growth hormone from a point of view of protein synthesis, mass or strength gain. 
um, so basically putting it all in a nutshell what it is saying is it does say that it's still early days uh, but it does say that the initial studies and excitement around the effect of growth hormones seem to be short-lived and not sustainable and as a result no real long-term effect in a healthy mature adult in fact it goes on to talk about um, um, a study by Taffy and co-workers where they were unable to see any increases in strength or muscle mass or fiber characteristics uh, after supplementing with the growth hormone in the resistance exercising training program and recently there are a wide range of study of the effects of growth hormone alone or combined with this in training on muscle strength power muscle cross-section area and fiber and size and mass in elderly men was unable to show any positive effects um, now it talks about doses not being high enough but then um, sites studies with HIV of age, age parents where doses have been very very high um, and then it goes on to talk about the downsides uh, and says that there is very good evidence to support that there is a decrease in exercise performance and that was according to a recent study by a Dr. Kai Lang of the Danish Institute of Sports Medicine. Uh, and in this study, healthy endurance trained athletes were unable to complete a custom cycling task after administration of growth hormone. Uh, there is good evidence that it exaggerates the pronounced increase in lipolysis that occurs during exercise and in addition increases the production of lactate and protons by working muscles. So basically what it's saying is there's a reduction of glycogenolysis in the muscle and liver and that's how the performance is decreased. So, so basically there's a decrease in glycogen storage in the muscle and liver. Putting it in simple terms. Um, it also says that a high level of um, fat metabolism in the bloodstream can actually cause cardiac arrhythmias, which is an irregular heartbeat. Um, it goes on to talk about the issues with um, type 2 diabetes. Uh, um, and it goes on to talk about the... Uh, risk of uh, insulin resistance so uh, sorry that's a bit um, vague but it's because I was reading from the actual study while I was talking to you uh, its take home message or its conclusion is that the balance of evidence suggests that in healthy adults growth hormone does not build muscle and provides no athletic advantage growth hormone use however does not cause disease um, so there you go. Um, good fat burner, good at regenerative of uh, connective tissue and promotes sleep and recovery, but no real direct impact on muscle growth according to this study. However, you speak to Mike Quinn and he says his stage weight increased by 30 pounds from the one and only time he took growth hormone. Now, obviously, when you look at antidotal evidence of that nature, we don't have it in a controlled environment. So you're very much based on the individual giving you all the parameters. That doesn't mean that people lie. It just means that people might forget that they ran a different drug protocol, they trained differently or they ate differently. And I'm not saying that's the case. Um, 
I've seen a lot of people that report definitely massive benefits in well-being and definitely um, improved sleep, excuse me, improved recovery. But these are doses two to four IU every other day. And they've shown a good change in body composition. What I haven't seen is when people are running high doses. What I do see is massive water retention, massive fullness, massive uh, intramuscular glycogen and water. Uh, and you see astronomical weight gain in the off season, yet coupled with what would appear to be very little or very low levels of condition change. Uh, so these guys look huge. They look lean. Um, best example I can give you is probably Jordan Peters. Jordan Peters is a good friend of mine. Now, we both went under my loss at the same time, and we were both running very high growth hormone and insulin protocols. And Jordan was over 300 pounds. Bear in mind, Jordan's a fucking dwarf. 5'6", five, 5'5". Five, five. Um, he was over 300 pounds, but looked relatively lean. The thing was, when he started to diet and he dropped the insulin and growth hormone, his condition didn't particularly look a lot different. He just looked smaller. And he stepped on stage that year lighter. Now, granted, part of that was because previous years he hadn't been as lean as he wanted to be on stage. But with the massive um, weight gain that he had in the off-season and what was relatively good condition, um, I, you know, you'd expected him to carry through a lot more muscle mass to stage. Um, I found it myself, I didn't really, I look huge, absolutely monstrous, but when I took it out, I just sort of shrunk, um, I lost loads of weight and no real change in physique at all, just a smaller version of what was there before. I've seen it in, in other bodybuilders and they have had net gains, uh, I remember one guy, I think he had a net gain of about nine, ten pounds on his previous year stage weight, which isn't, you know, that's decent gains for a competitive bodybuilder at a high amateur level. But for the weight gain he had in the off season and for the cost, and this is the other thing, the thousands of pounds that was being thrown at this through growth hormone use, is that I mean, you were talking probably costing a couple of grand a pound. Uh now, to me, there's probably areas that that money could be better spent, spent in a lot less, and you'd still get very similar net gains over a 12-month period. So from what I see for most, and it plays havoc with insulin resistance, uh, but what I see for most people that use mega doses of growth and insulin, they look huge, they look full, uh, and relatively lean for their body weight, but then when they diet down, there doesn't seem to be that carryover of residual muscle mass. I mean, Rich Biana, bless his cotton socks, was well aware of this and used this protocol regularly going into uh, expos. He'd run an insulin and growth hormone protocol for a couple of weeks before an expo, so he basically walked into expo 20, 25, even 30 pounds heavier than he was previous weeks with all the massive amount of glycogen uh, and water retention that he was driving intramuscular. I noticed in myself, even though at the time I was suddenly quite badly with the kidney starting to struggle, um, when I did the same sort of protocol, uh, now I had to do a bit of a sodium load in order to drive the water into the muscle properly because my kidneys were struggling at this point. But the fullness and size, within less than a week, I gained an inch on my biceps. I don't want muscle mass. That was glycogen and water being where I wanted it to be. Um, as soon as I removed those, I lost that size. So, to me, is it worth the expense? No. Not at all. Is it worth the risk? No. I mean, right, this study states that there's no issue with diseases, but we do know that growth hormone has a very undesirable effect again around tumours. <clears throat> and cancer cells and those sort of things. Now, you know, we don't always know what we've got going on inside us. Um, I have a friend who suffered quite badly with uh, bowel cancer, uh, and it would appear that his use of growth hormone rapidly accelerated growth. Didn't cause it. That that came from a different area. 
uh, but it did rapidly accelerate its growth. But it is effective at fat loss. Um, it is effective as a tissue regenerative. Uh, you will feel fitter and healthier. Your libido will definitely take an upturn. Your sleep will be better, and generally you'll feel a bit perkier. Uh, there are questions now being raised about its efficiency as a youth serum, so to speak. But from what I've seen with people that use a low dose is definitely the way to go uh, and works very well as a rejuvenative drug uh, and an aid to recovery. But if you want it mega size, eat more, train harder and put your money somewhere else because I really don't think you're getting what you need out of the growth. And I just think it's a very expensive approach for what may result in a net gain of possibly a couple of more pounds and chances are at low dose you'd have got very similar from improved recovery anyway so that's my take on it and like i said this study has just recently come out um i've seen it time and time again in people that use high doses uh when the drugs are removed there just is no real change to the physique but when the drugs are in place Jesus, they look awesome. They look phenomenal. Um, so it's down to you. I mean, you know, if, if you're more interested in, in, in that appearance for the marketing point of view or, or for whatever it may be, then crack on. <coughs> but do be very wary of the health risks involved. But if you want good, solid, dependable, reliable, sustained muscle growth, then I think your money's better spent elsewhere. I really don't think you're going to get the benefits you think you're going to get. But everyone seems to do it. Um, it's something as well that I believe a lot of the Middle Eastern guys and like Camel Crew and stuff like that, they actually use quite low doses as well and use it more as a recovery agent and aren't mega dosing in the way that we seem to think we need to. Um, and you can't knock the results that they're showing out. So, like I said, as recovery aid, fat loss, general well-being, yeah, two, four IU every day, great. Mega dosing for mass, waste of money, wasting your time. You're going to be severely disappointed when you remove the drugs. You'll love it when you're on them, if you can stand the pain in your wrists and your hands. You'll absolutely love it when you're on them. You'll look and feel as big as a house. I think you'll find your strength will go down. I don't mind it. Um, but when you remove it, it will just disappear. Okay. So I'll get this up and I'll get this YK11 video done, get that up tomorrow and we will continue from there. So take care guys and speak to you soon.